can see me in that camera. Yeah. My face, my skin tone should be orange, red, and yellow. Yeah. Um, so that means I'm the warmest thing inside the picture. Okay. So obviously everything around me is going to be blue or black uh -huh. or not orange, red, and yellow because this is not the same temperature as my skin. Right. I should be around 98 degrees, obviously. Um, if we take me out of this guy, it's obviously going to fluctuate based on whatever's inside the picture. So now there should be something else in there that's orange, red, and yellow that's obviously not a skin tone. So it's going to find the warmest spot. Okay. Um, so really what you're doing, Mom, is you're just going to be a camera person. Okay. The camera is right down here at the bottom left. Um, the red square means that it's already recording for us. And I'm going to show you more about this as we kind of go throughout the night. Okay. So, um, again, you're just going to hold that just like that all night long. Okay. If you, you know, flip it around and whatnot, it goes to YouTube first. And then I send it over to my website so you guys have all your data in one place. Okay. YouTube doesn't like the flippies. So in the event it starts raining, just pocket it. This is the most expensive piece that I'm worried about. I'll put that in first. Yeah. So <laughs> that would be ideal. Okay. Um, but the phone and everything else, like everything else, I mean, it's all covered by insurance. I just don't want to have to pay right. for parts. Um, but at the same token, like, that's that's your job for the night. I'm going to show you some cold spots and some videos that I've caught in the past. What's up, Mama? How you doing? you, Hannah. We're going to hear all your comments as well. Okay. <laughs> I'll be good. Your spirit box is super awesome. Uh -huh. I love this guy. So this spirit box, like, ah. I, like I said before, is going to sweep through all of the FM radio stations. <laughs> and it's going to record everything um, except for outside noise. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to go ahead and get this set up so it'll start recording for us. And then I'm going to show you how to use it. By the way, this might be annoying. Not really. To her. I've heard it so not many really. times. <laughs> like the way I have it set up, it's not that bad. So okay. it's what would be annoying. Oh just switching different channels. It's fine. So it's gonna sweep through the stations. Now I have this set up a little bit slower. It's not just white noise. Mm -hmm. You're gonna get the radio chatter. I want that. I want you to tell me what those DJs say, the lyrics are, the commercials. If you can make out a word or a phrase, spit it out. Like that's that's a big deal. Uh -huh. um, so there's literally only one button you need to worry about. It's the volume. It's right up here at the top. It's a turnstile wheel. Yeah. You control the volume. So there might be some places where I say kind of keep it audible just to you and mom, right. um, and kind of take it from there. Okay, so, so it's like right here. Okay. Yep. You got it. Let me zip this up so everything else stays dry. And then I'm going to show you some things that I'm going to use on my phone. And then Hannah, I'm sure you're going to be downloading this stuff as well. Mm -hmm. So at the top of your data page that you're going to get tomorrow uh -huh. um, are all of the apps and all of the tools that I use on my tours. Okay. A lot of people ask me, so I just started like just adding it to the top. Of course, it also gives you links for the reviews and all that other mess. I got to keep working. Uh -huh. So you know how that goes. All right, so my phone is going to do a couple of things. First off, you already know that um, I have a voice recorder in here that is controlled by my phone. Uh -huh. So that's the my upgrade that I just bought for myself after New Year's. Uh, the first thing I'm going to use is a spirit box that's going to give us a list of words randomly from time to time. Okay, so it's also going to save those to a list. This is my last tour. They had 66 terms. We're going to clear them out and start you guys fresh because they already have their words. 80% of this app is absolute BS. Okay, so pardon the French. Uh -huh. Maybe a swear word just slips every once in a while. You're 15. I'm sure you've heard it. Yeah. But... <laughs> 80% yeah. is BS. Mm -hmm. A lot of times I'll say that's part of the 80%. It doesn't mean anything. Uh -huh. If I can relate a word or phrase from this spirit box to a story or something of where we are, what's going on with us, then I will give you a verifiable link of where I got my data from and highlight it for you in your full word list. I do give you the full list. Why? Because you're going to email me later and say, hey, Nick, my cat's name is Radar, and Cat Radar showed up. I don't know that about you. That's why I give you the full list. My mm -hmm. gimmick is honesty. I'm not gonna make stuff up for you guys. I'm not gonna demons within me kind of stuff. Uh -huh. like, that's not what we're here for. So the other thing I'm gonna use is called a reverse gear box. So this one's a little tricky. So this one, will they claim that it was FM radio stations like on yours, but they flipped it backwards. I'm a communications major. I know that that's impossible. You can't do that. Uh -huh. I have the software to analyze EVPs, electronic voice phenomenon, uh -huh. if you didn't know what that was. So with that, I put it into software and I flipped it forwards. I wanted to know what it said. Uh -huh. So it's a man and a woman literally saying random words. But we hear it in real time in reverse. And this is what it sounds like. <laughs> So pretty creepy stuff, right? Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to play a quick EVP for you that kind of makes sense of why I use it still. And where is it? Alright, wrong email. I have too many email accounts. So 
though. This EVP, I was talking about a woman from England, uh -huh. and this is what I caught in real time, and then I'll explain it even more. Yeah. Baked beans breakfast? Yeah. Okay, so here's what happened. Your spirit box, now I didn't know what baked beans breakfast was. Uh -huh. That one told me, I'll fix you. I caught baked beans breakfast in real time, and then that word list gave me the word tea. I'll fix you baked beans breakfast and tea. That's a breakfast in the UK. Is it really? I had no idea. You heard my tone of voice, like baked beans breakfast. Like, what yeah. the hell's that? So again, that's why I use this reverse spirit box. I've had full names come out. I've had my name come out through this. Uh -huh. um, all kinds of things come through that different spirit box. But I keep this one open all night long so that the way the, the word list can build, it won't run unless it's on the screen. Uh -huh. um, so we'll kind of see how that goes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Questions, comments, concerns? Is this what you guys thought you were getting yourselves into? Yeah. <laughs> I know Hannah's like, oh, yeah, yeah, I want to listen to spirit box. So. This place is haunted, that's why we start here. This place used to be called Big John's. It was a bar named after Big John Kennedy. He was a football player for the New York Giants. Again, I'm giving uh -huh. you clues to listen for on your spirit box later. Oh, also keep in mind, that thing is recording as we speak. Even though we're not listening in real time, it's giving us a nice even level of volume. So that way, tomorrow morning when I give you the link back, you're gonna be able to listen to the whole thing from start to finish. Okay, that's pretty cool. And I am gonna give you some audio markers of things that I heard, whether they're relevant or not, just to yeah. kind of train your ear on what to listen for. Does that okay. make sense? Yeah. So anyway, Big John used to sit in the back of the bar here and he would tell the, the bartender, because we have a citadel nearby where the cadets train, Yeah. and if they would come over and have a drink, well, Big John would tell the bartender if they were old enough to drink. And one night two guys came in and they weren't old enough, so Big John tells the bartender to get them out. So they leave, kind of mad. They come back the next night and they got into a fight because they tried to steal the cash register from the front of the bar. Oh, wow. Yeah. So Big John, he starts wrestling with these guys on the floor. A couple of shots were fired. John gets shot in the neck and he goes back to the bar. The other guy's laying on the ground. He's just beat up. So John looks at the bartender and he says, get me another beer and go get him an ambulance. Now, uh -huh. nobody died in that story. This, this is a ghost tour, right? Uh -huh. So what haunts the place? It's the paranormal activity from the bullet hole that ricocheted off of John into the wall. So people that sit in the front of the bar can feel a little queasy, dizzy, nauseous, uh -huh. kind of thing. That's normal paranormal activity. Okay. Now, I bring this story up on purpose because I don't know how paranormal activity is going to affect you. I don't say this as a scare tactic. It's a literal health hazard. I've had people not make it through the tour perfectly fine if you start really? to feel anything like like what i just told you okay you need to speak up it's a big big deal i need to move you to a safer place okay now it's not that i'm taking you to all these crazy places that are serial killers and whatever these are happier ghosts that's kind of the gist of my tour yeah but sometimes the activity is just too much for the mind to handle because we're a little sensitive to it all of us mm -hmm. and again i've had people pass out i've had people just not make it it is what it is okay so Try my best to get them to a safer place. I am CPR trained if needed. Okay. <laughs> so we'll do what we have to do. Okay, we're good. <laughs> yeah. We're good. Just keep me posted. Okay. Happy. The mantle above your head's there. Uh huh. Cracked off in our one big earthquake of 1886. Okay. Big earthquake for Charleston because this is Charleston. We don't get earthquakes. So a piece of that's cracked off in the front of the building and killed somebody. Okay. His ghost is said to be seen right here in front of these patients. Now, that's, I don't have any verification of that. I don't have any other personal evidence of that. It's a story that I've heard many, many times. Yeah. So it's kind of a legend and lore. So take that forward to work. It's okay. also a, a lore for you guys to get your minds off of your own health could be affected during the tour. Yeah. <laughs> so are you ready to go ghost hunting? Uh-huh. Let's go this way. All right.
map meter and just have it here in my bag so we kind of have a point of reference of where some of the hotter spots might be. Uh -huh. So this particular place, this is where we keep the horses for the carriage ride. Okay. Okay, so your horses are still in there. So Anna, if you're going to get close to that with your spirit box, I'm going to need you to keep it to an audible level to you only. Mm -hmm. um, only because we're going to spook the horses if you get it too loud. We don't want to do that. So I understand. I, I, I ride every now and then I understand. Oh, good for you. <laughs> Good for you. My oldest daughter, like she was supposed to go to school to be a vet and help horses, and she hooked up with some guy. We won't get into the middle of that. I understand. <laughs> she's a mess. Love her I, pieces, but she's a mess. I understand. That's you all know. I'm going to say. <laughs> Do you know what this guy is? Um, I don't remember. Okay. I know what it is, but I can't remember the name. It's called an EMF meter. So this is going to measure electromagnetic fields for us. There's three different types. The first mm -hmm. one's natural, comes from the earth. That's, it should just stay on green when it's just, there's nothing going on. Yeah. Um, the next thing is going to be cell phones, electronic devices, parking meters. It's gonna make it go into a rhythm or a pulse. Kind of okay. like, I could see a little bit of a rhythm there. Oh, we got that red going on. But when it's going erratic, like it is right now, uh -huh. something is happening. Something unexplainable. Something I may not have an answer for. So okay. this is kind of our guide. Should of, I turn my phone off? Nope. Okay. It would literally have to be touching it okay. for it to give it any kind of a little, because our cell phones really don't give out that much of a signal. Okay. I'm just, it's an example of what it can do. So let me find a good spot for this just so it's visible, since my water is taken up the front. I normally wear cargo pants and keep my drink here, and yeah. then put this guy here. Sorry. But anyway, so this is the same barn where we kept the horses that delivered milk to Charleston. Okay. So there's your clues. Delivery, milk. Um, we also found out, from my, my last story I just did, that they also delivered eggs because the word eggs showed up on my spirit box. And I was like, I wonder if they delivered eggs too. Lo and behold. They did. They did. So, um, there's not a whole lot of history here. That's pretty much it. But we're gonna go into a little bit further training with your devices. Okay. Okay, so your spirit box, because you two are probably gonna be sticking together. Now, in places like this, we are gonna separate a little bit because my spirit boxes are gonna be listening for me and then you're gonna be listening to yours. I don't wanna cross the streams. I know it's a bad Ghostbuster joke, but it works. <laughs> so, do you remember Ghostbusters? Have yes. It? Yeah, okay. yeah, I've made her watch it a few times. Good deal. I like the new ones too, by the way. I can't wait for Afterlife to come out. Did you hear about that one? I, I did. So it's kind of like a, the same vein of Transformers. Uh -huh. Like they're really bulking this up, like a big, deep, dark story. I can't wait for it. But anyway, um, so Spirit Boxes. You're, you probably watch a lot of stuff where they say, is somebody here? Right? Yes. No, we're not doing that. What? Yes and no questions are an absolute, try to reword it in some other way, shape, or form. First off, if somebody, if you say somebody here and you hear the word no, first off, that means somebody's here. They yeah. answered you. <laughs> yeah. Second, if the DJ or whoever comes through says houses, you think you heard yes. Why? Because S and O in the phonetic English language are two of the most common sounds we have. So I just stay away from those two things. Now, instead of is somebody here, if somebody's here with me, please tell me your name. That's a great question. Now you don't know what to listen for. And it could be Tom could be Harry, wh whoever. But we're gonna stick to things that you know right now. So what color is the barn, everybody? Uh, red. 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 There's no deviating away from the color red. What color is the barn? You're gonna wait 30 seconds or so, and then you're gonna ask the same question again if you didn't get an answer. Mm -hmm. Try two, three, maybe four tries. If at that point you still don't have a direct red, you're gonna open it up a little bit. Tell me what's inside the barn. You have horse, animal, draft, because they're draft horses, um, delivery, milk, eggs, calcium. I got sodium that night too. Which means Did you made, really? Yeah, they okay. delivered salt. Um, so just an interesting word to come through. But then you open it up and you don't know what you're hearing for other than what type of animals they might be. Mm -hmm. So again, kind of keep that in mind as you're going through. Okay. Your thermal imaging camera, let's talk about that for a second. Okay. Oh, I got the word surge. I got all kinds of words actually. So again, your word list so far is Saint, Shuttle, which could be referring to the carriages, mm -hmm. uh, finish, Natalie, and search. A lot of this is about putting clues together. So far, I don't really see anything. Natalie could be one of the horses for all I know. Uh -huh. um, but we're, we're gonna, I always look into every single word when I'm uh -huh. doing the research just to see if there's a tie. Okay. Unless it's something direct. Now, um, I wanted to show you a video of basically what you're gonna be looking for. So let me bring it up. I'm sorry, I normally have it ready. I'm sitting in my car. I should have had it ready. Whew. Where, where, you guys said you parked over there, by the way? Yeah, I'm parked in there. Did you guys pay? I didn't. I couldn't see anything. What do I need to do? Probably need to move it to a meter. Okay. Just so you don't have to pay anything. All right. I can do that. Um, I, don't, I haven't seen any cops out there. Just trying to, like, this is a private lot. Like, yeah. 
people that work here, they actually get a little angry that I'm back here, but nobody's gonna. All right, these people are gonna get on my nerves. <laughs> so I'm going to turn my volume off. So I turn, Eight. which way I turn it up so I know I can hear it, right? Yeah, so you'll turn it up here in a second. Let me uh -huh. um, show mom what she's looking for. Okay. You guys are gonna get a kick out of this. Anyway. Ooh, it's chilly, huh? Work now next weekend imagine. is Valentine's Day weekend, and I'm booked almost solid. I don't, and it's going to be like 32 degrees out here. Can't wait for the, and we might, we have actually the possibility of snow, so we'll see what happens with that. Yeah, we don't live around here. Okay. All right, so let me show you what you're looking for. Sorry, I do a lot of social media posts. All right, so this, this is one. my this hands is our, are actually cold. Our next location. Um, so this big orange thing is a wall. Uh-huh. Move this back so you can see. There's gonna be two living people walking from left to right. You'll see their heads. You see the orange? Uh-huh. Okay, so we're gonna fast. Those are living. Don't get excited oh, yet. Yeah. We're looking for dead people, right? Uh-huh. Oh, come on. I, I, I get I'm getting, excited. Wet, so it doesn't getting excited. No, you're gonna see two dead people that just passed by. Let me rewind it again. I went a little too far. I'll be right there. One. Too. Okay, I saw that. So oh, you're looking that. for those black or blue spots to move okay. on their own. You want to try to keep one of us, if you can, because of our skin temperature, in view at all times. Okay. Why? Because that way you don't get the fluctuation. Um, if you were to point this at the wall, you'd probably have all red and wouldn't be able to see any blue moving by. Yeah. So because it's going to be the same temperature. Um, but do you want to move your car before you guys start diving yeah, in? Yeah, she can get started. I'll hang out with her. Um, but I'll just move it. I'll just circle th through or something. That lot is the same company as that lot. Okay. And they're expensive. Like it's like 15 bucks an hour. Okay. Well, let me move that. Then. Yeah. So. Um, Can I go right here? Should be. Is there a meter up there? I think so. I can't tell if it's a meter or. It looks like a meter, but I don't I think it's covered. Yeah. Um, and there might actually be spots. Let's head down this way. There might be a spot you can just move up. You can turn your clip off there. It's already. The opposite way, so just whichever way it'll let you go. And it gets out. There you go. Turn up a little bit higher than that. Next to that tree. There's a meter right there. Just so okay. you can get charged. You want to take that? Sure. Let me take the umbrella for you and I'll put it in the car. Thank you. <laughs> All, right. All right. So let's go learn more about your spirit box. So let's find a good hot spot with our EMF. Somebody's hanging out with us tonight. I want you to tell us what color that barn is. Mm -hmm. See how this is just kind of going all over the place? Uh -huh. Tell us what color the barn is. Now it's pretty much gone dead. I heard someone say red, some look red earlier.
thanks for being versatile. Like, I know it sounds like you really wanted to go. <laughs> so. I need somebody to tell me what color that barn is. They would have put a boot on your car. I would be in big trouble. Yeah, they would have booted you. Thank you. I changed my mask. Oh, there you go. So, well, this one will keep my nose warm. I can also if, keep my glasses from fogging up. So, I had a, I have epilepsy. So uh -huh. When masks first started, like I had a really really hard time, like gagging, puking, like the yeah. whole night. Just a weird mental thing. Yeah. And then we went to Universal for our Christmas. Like, I took my daughter to Universal. Yeah, I got uh -huh. to wear upset that she was gone. Um, but you you have to wear a mask in there. Yeah. So I learned to elongate how long I can keep it on. So. This is what I got. Well, my mother-in-law makes them. And I don't know if you noticed, but it doesn't go under my yeah. chin. Yeah. Because that's a weird thing for me. So yeah. she has a special size that she makes just for my masks for the tours. See, look. Yep, I noticed too. I make my own. Do you? Yeah. Yeah. All right, so I'm okay. gonna let you guys take a lap, ask some questions, do what you're gonna do. I'm gonna turn up my reverse spirit box so you guys have some extra audio to listen to. Okay. I'm probably gonna spend a few minutes in here just so you get the gist of how to listen to it. Like you said, you thought you heard the word red. Let's get a definitive. Mm -hmm. um, so even if you wanna switch it up and go straight over to what's inside the barn, because we've already asked a few times about the, you know, the color, uh -huh. but have some fun with it. Again, we're only going to spend like five minutes here just so you get the gist of what to look for, what okay. you get the gist of listening for, and then we're going to go learn some real history. Is that okay. Fair? So, from time to time, if you can, maybe just wipe this off because it looks like it's pretty soaked and I don't want the SD card to ruin your file. I don't want to press any buttons. <laughs> They're actually pretty hard to push. Okay. So, all right. Take a walk. See what mm -hmm. happens. Can you tell me what you used to transport? Can you tell me what you used to transport right through here? What is your name?
How long have you been here? Can you tell us how long you have been right here? You need to be here so you can hear it. Can you hear anything? No. Did you hear anything? I heard horse one time. Did you? I asked him. I asked. I asked what was inside the barn, and I believe I heard horse. I okay. heard horse. Well, the cool thing is, is it's recordable, so I can go back and verify it and see if it was actually there. Uh -huh. Um. And so will you? And if it's if I do find it, like we are, what time did we really get started? Was it about ten after eight? Yeah. Okay. So about thirty minutes into the recording. So I was just trying to get the droplets out. Of second coat. I got four layers <laughs> on. <laughs> My northern blood has uh, thinned out pretty pretty good. I'm um, from the south, so I am not used to this cold. Uh, let's see. I heard Lewis. I heard from the earth. I got the word puck. So, puck. again, okay. I got some weird things that you guys will have to verify for me. I don't always listen to the regular recording just uh -huh. because I'm, I'm in real time and, and trying to capture everything else on the recordable stuff. Yeah. Um, so, It'll be up to you guys to go back and verify what I heard. Okay. So let's go learn some real history. What do you say? Yes. yes. Let's go this way. Do I need to turn it down? Ah, oh, you can turn it down. No. You can yell at me. No, I'm okay. I just try to keep warm. Yeah. <laughs> I keep the blood moving. I, I, I walk fast too. So this is the another beautiful sight, right? Uh huh. So <laughs> yeah. I told you it's not always sightseeing with me. This is the uh, Pinckney Mansion site. So this was home to Eliza and Charles Pinckney. I'm actually gonna put this in my pocket while it's still running. Um, so Eliza and Charles Pinckney had a son named Charles, and they had a nephew named Charles. Um, they, the son and the nephew were uh, signers of our constitution and obviously the son was raised here. So, okay. Uh, pretty cool stuff, but I hate politics and we just had an election, so let's move on to Eliza. Yeah. She is way cooler than people that can sign documents. So Eliza, by the way, this is the exact place where baked bean breakfast occurred in the video that I showed you. Okay. So this is a very big hot spot for me. If I were to have a grand finale, this would be it. Um, and my EMF should probably, yep, good, getting something. Yeah. Um, so. With that being said, Eliza married Charles at a very young age. I'm gonna give you questions and clues here, but you're not gonna know the answers. So kind of keep in mind to what's happening with the story here. So Eliza married at a very young age, hopefully you can find out the age, because her dad thought he was dying and he wanted all of his kids home and she didn't wanna go. This was over in England. She okay. didn't make that journey. She didn't believe he was dying. So he got better. She was already married, which means she was staying put. Yeah. He starts sending gifts over from England. She was a botanist. I mean, she basically dabbled with plants. One of those gifts happened to be indigo. So okay. indigo, if you live in the South, you should know is a major cash crop, which saved pretty much all of the colonies. Yeah. So she, it started right here, and 
hers, you know, servants and slaves were part of the Gullah culture, and they already knew how to cultivate this plant in our colder temperatures, obviously, that we have now. Yeah. So with that being said, we already had it here. She just made it profitable because she had daddy overseas to be able to sell the cash crop to them and save the colonies after the rice plantations went downhill. So I'm just touching the iceberg of the things that Eliza has done. But I'm going to give you a few questions that you can kind of poke around with that you don't know answers to because there's a lot of weird facts about her. So Eliza was the second wife named Eliza from Charles. So back to back. So he was married to Charles, got divorced, married another, another I'm sorry, married Eliza, divorced, married another Eliza. Wow. So they both go by their maiden name, not middle name. Sorry, kids usually get that confused. But both maiden names start with the letter L. That's all I'm going to tell you. Um, you can ask anything you want to about Eliza's death. The one that planted the indigo. Mm -hmm. How old she was, where did she die, which actually we've already discussed certain cities today. I'll give you that clue. Um, where is she buried? Uh, what did she die from? And which U.S. president was a pallbearer at her funeral? And that should tell you how important Eliza Pinckney was to the colonies. Okay. We're also talking, keeping, keeping in mind that this was colonial time, 1750s to 1790s, uh -huh. where there was no such thing as a business woman. So you're going to hear a lot about females tonight. I love the, the prominent females that came out of Charleston. Okay. So it's a big deal. So nobody talks about this site. They've never done an archaeological dig. It was supposed to be a commercial hotel here already. Obviously, it's just a parking lot. Um, you can also ask what happened to the mansion. That's another big question people like to ask. Um, try to stay away from their kids. We get a lot of negative activity out of that because it was a tragedy. And usually all activity will stop if it begins. So if she brings up what happened with the kids, then by all means, keep asking questions to keep it going. Um, but you're going to hear answers out of that. People get a little funny about their cars and cameras. Uh -huh. So if somebody's walking through to come to their car, you're just holding a cell phone. Okay. So just kind of keep it low like you're not filming. Okay. Um, and this is the only way in and out. So don't become a ghost on my tour. We seek them. We don't make them. Okay. So people do come in here flying. Um, okay. And we've had homeless problems in here before, but I've already walked a lot before you guys came down. Uh -huh. But the homeless shelters are open again, which is good. Okay. So we haven't had that in the past two weeks. Um, let's see. I know you're eager to get started with your spirit box. I'm gonna, you know, we're gonna stay within the confines of the wall here, and um, kind of see what's going on. You guys see the light blinking on the back of that building over there? I do. Okay, so that is kind of like my barometer of how much activity we're gonna get. The EMF will normally go in sync with it, so I'll get a pulse here, and then you'll get a pulse there. And it's not very accurate tonight, but I filmed it, I don't know how many times. It's usually within two frames. Sometimes that light's blinking very heavy. Sometimes it's just on, sometimes it's off. It just depends on the night. Okay. Uh, with it blinking light, I'm only expecting a few phrases or words that we could try to relate to the Pinkney family. Okay. So we'll see what happens. Again, I don't want to be, bring it, you know, bring the volume down, but at the same token, we never know what we're going to actually capture here because it's huge. Okay. Um, so have fun, learn some stuff about that. How are we doing on the witness? I'm, I'm thinking it's, it's okay. I can wipe it off. It's, it's more on here yeah. that I'm seeing. Yeah, I'll have to rice that thing up when I get home. Yeah, I mean, sure. I can put it in my pocket if you want me to. No, I mean, this is a hot spot. This is where we yeah. get most of our activity. If we're like our, walking to our next spot, if you want to pocket it, that would be fine. Because okay. it is like a good three to four blocks for the next one of location. Okay. Um, so I'm going to definitely go through my spirit box and see what I can capture. We're going to okay. spend probably a good 10 minutes here. Okay. Um, so go ahead and start asking your questions and see what comes up. Oh, look, I got words coming out of us. Oh, okay. look at that. Look at that. Nicholas. I, now, I will tell you on the reverse spirit box, I normally get a hello Nick or hi Nick out of here at least once or twice a month. Oh, yeah? So the fact that my name is here, it's like she's almost saying, hey, I, I see that you're here. Okay. So, and I got the word writing right after that. And what do I do for a living? You write. I'm a writer. So again, we're, we're going to, and not to mention, she did write back and forth to her daughter, her yeah. only daughter. Ooh, okay. um, so oh, again, I'm taking, like, this is good. So I'm, I'm pretty excited about my name, writing. I don't know where, Why did it, I'm curious about a but you know. Again, part of the 80% bullshit. Like, yeah. it's probably nothing because the app is going to come up with its own words. So, okay. Right, you guys go do your thing. Let me see what I can capture. Come on, Let's Hannah. Oh, I just walked in a puddle. I'm glad I wore my boots. Yeah, right? What age did you get married at here? Huh? 
how old were you when you died? What? What president was that uh, pallbearer at your funeral? What was the only president that was in the 1700s? There's more, but... What? What president was a pallbearer at your funeral? What happened to the mansion? How old she was when she died? No. Uh, I heard 327 after. But can you tell me how old you are when you died? Are you hearing anything? Not really. I was trying, because I'm over here like this. <laughs> so one of the questions that 
and, and this is really cool too. A lot of times I'll ask questions that I didn't tell you about because I'm going off on my own conversation. I'm here every night. Uh -huh. So I'm just trying to make a conversation happen. So a lot of times somebody will turn around and say, I heard the number two. And I heard two. I did hear two. I heard three, two, seven. And somebody's calling me. <laughs> well, ignore your phone right now. So the answer can go anywhere. So it can go to my audio, your audio, or the three spirit boxes that we have running. That's uh -huh. why I run so many at once, because I want the answer to go anywhere. Um, I've been asking about the weather a lot. So did you hear the word rain or wet or anything related to cold, wind? I believe I did. I'm over here listening, trying my best. Okay. Uh -huh. It's okay. I mean, in this area, you can turn it up a little bit. Yeah. Um, people don't really care. They just, they're more mindful about the damn camera than they are anything if somebody starts passing through. Um, let's go ahead and turn it up for a second. Maybe, maybe I can get an answer out of your spirit box instead of... So if I have a member of the Pinkney family here, I want you to use the box with the red light and tell us what kind of weather we're having. Tell us what kind of weather we're having right now. Man, whatever they're cooking smells good. I know it does, doesn't it? Yeah. You can use this sleeve if you want to. Yeah, I got a, a sweat jacket on inside of this. Because it's made out of fleece. Uh huh. code to get in instead of a thumbprint. Right. I'm not hearing anything. Did you see anything weird on yours? Uh-uh. Okay. I'm pretty excited about Nicholas in writing. Um, but I also got, like, answer quickly. So we'll have to see, like, what comes up on your spirit box. So the uh -huh. answers to the questions that I had you ask. Um, what questions did you ask, by the way? What did you choose out of that match? We asked, um... What happened to the mansion, how old she was when she was married, and how old she was when she died. Okay. So she was 22 when she got married. Um, and there are some websites that say her birthday was December 22nd. Most of them say December 28th. Mm -hmm. So 22, when I get that, it's kind of hard to determine whether it's her birthday or her age from when she got married. I, um, I did hear two, though. Yeah, I did ask how many people that I bring with me. I always ask that question. That mm -hmm. way you guys get a definitive answer. Um, okay. That way it doesn't count me either. But you heard 327. Yeah. So I don't know what 327 has any relation to. It could be the 327th Regiment that somebody was in an army for. Mm -hmm. Maybe. You know, yeah, again, I'll look it up. So uh -huh. if you heard that specifically, probably because a phone number came up that way. Um, and you have to think of that thing as kind of like Bumblebee from Transformers. Uh -huh. yeah. That's the easiest way to explain it. Mm -hmm. So the other answers, Eliza died at the age of 70 in Philadelphia. Okay. Business. It's probably uh, what 7 meant too. If I think about it clearly. It's a possibility to stretch. Yeah, stretch. Unless but, unless yeah. it came up in actual 70, I would. I, yeah. that's the only way I'm going to probably take that as definitive evidence. Mm -hmm. um, but she died, from what we know, as breast cancer. Okay. So, again, we're talking colonial times. We can't really say for sure. Yeah. Um, but that's also where she's buried, is in Philadelphia. Oh, really? Yes. Okay. So Charles is buried here. We're going to go see his part of the cemetery tonight. Uh -huh. um, but Eliza is up in Philadelphia. All right. Um, and it was George Washington that was the pallbearer. At I her asked funeral. that. 
No. She did ask that. I, I did. Uh, I asked that. Who was the president during the 1700s? <laughs> no, I asked what president was yeah. Paul Bearer at your funeral. Now, I know. The cool thing is, is that I didn't even know that fact until I got George Washington as an EVP twice in one week. I'm like, that's too weird and too much of a coincidence. Whenever something comes up double, especially in the same night, uh -huh. um, I, I tend to look into it further. Lo and behold, he was a Paul Bearer. Okay. Um, so... The mansion caught on fire during the Great Fire of 1861. That was long after Charles and Eliza's death, but it was still in the Pinckney family. Uh -huh. um, I normally go up to that corner because that's where most of the damage was. I don't. I wasn't asking anything about the Great Fire, um, but I normally get like burning candle, anything that deals with flame. Uh -huh. um, so, and it wasn't just this house; it was many parts of our of our city here. Okay. Uh, let's see what else did I have you ask? I think that about covered it, didn't it? Oh, Lucas and Lamb. So it was Eliza Lucas Pinckney that planted the indigo. Eliza Lamb Pinckney was the insignificant first wife. So they will both come through with their maiden names. Okay. And again, things that I learned by the spirit boxes that we are using. Okay. All right. So from this point, I mean, we have a lot to listen to and a lot to watch. Sorry, I didn't mean to talk mm -hmm. to you. I'm gloved. I'm good. Um, <laughs> <laughs> My hand is on this crap. Um, um, me too. We're gonna walk up about four blocks. Okay. So if you can, go ahead and pocket that. And just leave it low. Um, and that way, we still get the audio piece uh -huh. of it, but we're gonna keep it dry as long as we can. Okay. If you wanna listen along the way, you can. I'm listening for names at this point. Um, and I'll explain more once we get there, but if you get specific names that'll pop up, um, I, this is the time frame where I listen in the morning of, did I get any of the names from the place that we're going to? Okay. So, let's get it rolling. All if right. you guys don't mind, I'm gonna vape along the way. Is that gonna bother anybody? No, it's fine. My, my way of getting a, out of a mask for a few minutes. Okay. <laughs> Imagine as a writer, I smoke pretty heavily. Oh, you got some of those? I got some of those at home. I used them for the first time last week. My wife brought them home from her job. Uh huh. She said, it's not easy to touch your gloves since you're going to be cutting my gloves up so you can use your devices. They, they were great. I just couldn't think of brands in I wasn't even sure I was going to need gloves. For a bowling tournament, we don't go out and do a whole lot. It's more getting her ready. Mm -hmm. Have you practiced before a tournament? Yes, I have. But I don't. I normally don't practice on the sports side. Pattern. I practice on the house Ghostbusters, that means somebody booked another tour. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's, the, uh, that's 
the ring tank for that. That's pretty cool. Like I said, I turned mine off because I got tired of it. Yeah, it's not a problem. I'm pushing people away because I only go to 10 people. Oh, really? It's not close to 9 o'clock. Yeah. I only do one for a night. So, it gets a little, a little hectic in the summer and uh -huh. in October. Like, I probably, if I were to put everybody on, I would have to Not that I didn't do well in October, but it shows you that I was pretty much full nice yeah. nights a week. I got on my duck boots tonight. Yeah, I know, but still. I'm okay. I'm still wearing pants. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Up here, we're going to be passing through a neighborhood. Okay. So just come up here. We have three friends go hunting for about five minutes. Now, tour birds are not allowed to do tour guiding things in the neighborhoods. Okay. That's the law. We're allowed to pass through, but we're not allowed to. Them and have new podcast episodes on 
So if you like listening to ghost stories and investigations, this actually started as a podcast. Okay. So it's got the same name. So if you listen to podcasts, no. it's the same thing. So I've got a video on my phone. Yeah. Of this one. Hi. Dancing in my kitchen. And there is a white orb that dances around the kitchen with her. Get out of here. It has never been there before until I put my dad's shirt out on the couch. My dad died when I was 18. Oh, wow. And it's never been back. And his shirt's not there anymore. Oh, okay. bring the shirt out and it again. I just, it's me, because it follows her around the room. That's really Yeah. I'd like to see that. If you want to send it to me. I can send it to you. I asked Mom and Grandpa loved to dance. And Mom said, my, my dad loved to dance. I was like, what, son? <laughs> he called himself Rubber Band Man. Rubber Band Man? So, yep. Prettiest place in that all is of Charleston. Gorgeous. Day or night, I used to go down here and tell all the stories. We had some changes in where we were allowed to go. Mm -hmm. um, so, But I, I usually stop and tell people what this is. This is Philadelphia Alley. You guys should remember that pretty yeah. clearly. Um, but there's stories of duels down here, and it is haunted. That's gorgeous. up here obviously everybody needs to see a cemetery on one of my tours so this sign says the only ghost at st phillips is the holy ghost there's mm -hmm. a reason for that they mm -hmm. don't want paranormal investigators diving into the story mm -hmm. the story is very quick and simple 1888 a young lady died 10 days after her stillborn child okay so 1987 99 years later we have a local photographer that's taking pictures of all of our cemeteries the capture is a full apparition of a woman wearing a shawl and a baby basket next to her over the grave. This is 1987. No Photoshop, no cell phones, no craziness. There's nothing like that. He sends it to Kodak to try to get it to bunk, to try to figure out what happened with the photo. Mind you, this is a professional photographer. He mm -hmm. can't figure it out. Neither can Kodak. The wow. woman's name is Sue Howard Hardy. Okay, mm -hmm. so I don't show the picture on my tour because the place is cursed. The picture is cursed. Mm -hmm. So if a woman is holding the picture, say on your cell phone, um, you're not going to feel well. Kind of the same symptoms that push about a big jump. Yeah. Um, now, the other thing about that is if a woman is pregnant and holding the picture, they're not going to have a good pregnancy. Okay. So I'm not going to be that guy. I'm very superstitious, as I'm sure you can imagine. Yeah. Um, so, oh, she's got to grab pictures. Do you need us to get out of your way? Oh, I. Yeah, we can move down. <laughs> no, we can move. Yeah, let's go down the field. No, that's okay. Obviously, the eastern side, mm -hmm. that's the western side. The side that we're standing on is... <laughs> so, 
This side is actually for native Charlestonians. That side is for everybody else, much okay. bigger. Now, John Calhoun, vice president, he's uh -huh. buried on that side. Why? Because he went back and forth as he tried to figure out if he was actually from here or not. Okay. He's not originally from here. So he actually got moved. He's in a carsophagus. That's a tombstone above ground. Uh -huh. So they were able to pick him up and move him. And he, I think, went back and forth two or three different times. Wow. Uh, yeah, until they tried to figure it out. Okay. So, John Calhoun was also a big racist and a bigot. Uh -huh. um, we had a big uh, statue of him over in Marion Square that recently got taken down uh -huh. with the BLM movement. Yeah. So again, it, it was a big thing because he was 55 feet in the air, like over a, a prominent part of our market, like the Market Street. Uh -huh. These ladies are having a blast. I yeah, want what they're are. having. So um, they're having fun, Hannah. Yeah, they're having a blast. Yeah, There's yeah, a couple yeah. of stories that all tie in together here. I'm going to point out a few things and then we're going to go across the street and I'll kind of put all of those things together. Okay. So I told you about that side of the cemetery, but right yeah. past that, you can see a gas lamp. I don't know if you guys can see it from here. It's always burning. So there's a gas lamp. Right okay. There. That's the pirate house. Okay. okay. One block past that is Dock Street Theater, one of the top ten haunted locations in America. Wow. Now, we can't go any further than, like, these pillars right here because mm -hmm. that's considered a neighborhood. Okay. Kind of like the same rules I told yeah. you about before. So I'm going to tie all three of those places, St. Philip's, uh, Pirate House, and Dock Street Theater, all together. Mm -hmm. so we're going to do it over here. Yeah, Okay, I'm alright right now. I'm gonna put you guys on this side of me, so, because I'm gonna take a break from the back, so that way it doesn't stop me. Okay. So, the pirate house is where black men would actually come off their ships, uh -huh. and they would have a drink, meet with a few girls. Um, and then they dug a tunnel from the pirate house underground over to Dock Street Theater so they can actually catch a show. Okay. So that's the whole history behind the pirate house. Now, unfortunately, somebody lives there now. Uh huh. So we can't go up and visit him. Okay. Apparently, he gets grumpy when he comes in. Yeah, I bet so. So. Oh, you accidentally shut it off. Oh, It's okay. Well, I can fix it. Eh? Or you did something. Yeah, I don't want to do that. It's okay. I noticed that the sound was a little muffled. Like I said, I'm going to have to dry this out pretty good. We're all here tonight. The record button doesn't want to work. Set it again. At least I got it on the regular audio. It might just because it's wet. I don't think I've ever had it out in the rain. Well, I've been wiping it off every chance that was Okay, what? What are you doing? Got a lot of fun. Oh, their SD card is exposed, like there's no little cover on it, so I'm wondering if it's just not recognizing. Okay, unfortunately, I think we're only going to have so much recording out of this guy. So we'll still use it because we still have a full, uh, in, you know, investigation to look at on this place. But I still mm -hmm. want to give you the story. So I'm going to hand this back to you. Just know that your recording for that is going to stop at the Sue Howard Party place. Okay. So again, but I'm going to blame that on the rain. Okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, you're fine. Um, the guys who make that are down in Florida, mm -hmm. and if I need another one right away, they can overnight it to me. Okay. Um, so it's not a big deal. All right. So. With that being said, uh, so we talked about the Pirate House, but they dug a tunnel over to Dock Street Theater. Mm -hmm. And Dock Street Theater has three different phases to it. This used to be Dock Street. 
just because it, uh, the, the name of the theater. And then we turned it into a hotel. Okay. During the time it was a hotel, they changed it to Church Street because they widened the road, and obviously the church can't move. Right. So if you look at a map of Church Street, mm -hmm. it's a half moon around the church. Okay. So that was during the time of the hotel at Planters. Then we turned it back into Dock Street Theater again. I tell you that because there's a ghost at Dock Street Theater that is from the Planters Hotel time period. Her name was Nettie Dickerson, and she worked at the church. She was past the marrying age of 17. She was 23. Nobody wanted to marry her. She was too old. So wow. she's seen all the prostitution going on down at Planters Hotel when she goes down there to get a job. Uh -huh. Now, she's the best love girl in the place. I'll say that and keep it rated G. Yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, she still wasn't happy. Mm -hmm. She used to go out to the second story balcony and, and ponder about coming back to the church because you can see it from there. Yeah. And one night, the priest sees her down there, so he walks down and he goes up there and tries to talk to her. And a storm rolls in, lightning strikes the wrought iron banister that they're leaned on, and strikes her dead. Wow. Now, you can see her ghost from the knees up only. Why? Because Planters Hotel, back into Dock Street Theater that we know now, we raised the first floor ceiling. So that means she's walking on the floor that she knows. Okay. Does that make sense? So yeah. you can only see her from the knees up. So that's the interesting story there. You can also see Junius Booth, who mm -hmm. was a traveling actor. He is the father of John Wilkes Booth, who shot Lincoln yeah. in a theater. During that time period, Edgar Allan Poe's mother was a child actress coming through town as well. So okay. there's a lot of history with Edgar Allan Poe in Charleston. Apparently the Annabelle Lee story also happened here. Okay. And Annabelle Lee is buried in an unmarked grave in Unitarian Church about Wait half a block from here. Yeah, that thing's just doing all kinds of stuff on its own. Yeah, we don't want the playback. Is that what it says? Yeah, it's, it play because it'll play it back for us through mm -hmm. this if we wanted it to. Again, I think the the moisture in it. Okay, we're back again. Okay. All right, so let's talk about the place that we need us to investigate one last time. So this little building over here with the crosses on it, uh -huh. those are actually earthquake bolts. That is an invention here in Charleston that you put earthquake bolts on either side of the building, they run through the floors. That way if an earthquake occurs and the building starts to tumble, you just tighten them up. And okay. that way it brings the building back to, to shape. Okay. So most buildings, older buildings, have earthquake bolts. People love to show them off um, when you're on another tour. But anyway, the powder magazine, this is on the original corner of the Charlestown wall. So the powder magazine is just inside of that. Okay. Um, the reason for that is because we're three blocks away from the water and cannons can't shoot that far. But in the event that it is hit, it is protected by 32 inch thick walls, eight pillars around the center or around okay. the edge of it, with one in the center and they all meet in the middle. The roof you see with the weird shingles as uh -huh. we get closer, that's filled with sand from 1712. That is the oldest government building we have on the east coast. Wow. It was finished in 1713. So right next to that building is the home of Nicholas Trott, who was a, a was he was the attorney general, the first attorney general here in Charleston. Okay. Um, and he was the one who tried most of the pirates that came through town. Okay. Now, there is a pirate attached to this building. And the only tie that I can find is because it's the same time period. She, her name was Anne Bonnie. Again, another female. Anne Bonnie was an Irish immigrant that came to America because she was an illegitimate child. Okay. Her dad brought her here. She fell in love with a pirate passing through town. His name was John, uh, Jim Bonnie. So she married him, but then she fell out of love with him and had an affair with Calico Jack. He had a much better ship, much better reputation with the pirates, and she fell in love with him. She joined his crew by dressing like a man. Okay. She was allowed to be a female in his quarters only, and it was a very small crew. They go down to Jamaica, the ship gets caught. There was another female on the ship that was doing the exact same thing that she was. Her name was Mary Reed. Those two women were the only two that fought back against that ship trying to be taken. Obviously it was taken over. All the men downstairs that were too drunk to come out and fight were tried and hung. But Mary and Anne both claimed to be pregnant. So they were tried, convicted, but they weren't hung. Now, the father of Anne Bonnie was an Irish big prominent money. He was able to bail her out. So mm -hmm. she lived a long, healthy life. 84 years old, remarried, so many children. The, it goes on and on because it's all speculative. Yeah. Mary Reed died in jail about a year later. Nobody knows about the babies. Nobody knows if they were a real story, if they were actually pregnant. That's what I'm here to do. So okay. we're here for you guys to ask questions to see what you can find. Um, this is also a place where you can pull out your camera. Okay. We're going to kind of walk along the side of the building while you ask questions. And then we're going to go out that exit and go check out the front. And then we'll kind of wrap this up and see what we captured along the way. Okay. So I'm going to kind of follow you guys so my isn't, isn't like 
interfering with yours. Why are YouTube videos playing on my phone? <laughs> Probably because I left the screen open. Alright, so I'm gonna actually I'll lead the way so that way you guys know where we're going. And oh, that's interesting. We're getting some answers from before. We got animal, fire, and I got and or. I don't know what time frame that is, 2111. So what time is it now? That was about 10, 15 minutes ago. Okay. So we were probably standing over, over there. there. Yeah, we'll see what happens. So I'm going to ask questions. You can ask questions if you want to, but we're going to make a kind of a short trip and I'll show you guys how to get back to your car because my garage is actually right down the road. Okay. So let's take a hike this way. Stay out of puddles. Okay. <laughs> Jack. We got Jack. Did you? Jack. Okay. Jack, can you tell me what your real name was? Because Calico Jack was your nickname. Danny. Okay. Oh, cool. Yeah, you're going to have to shut that one off. We're going to have to call it on that one to let it right off. Go ahead and pocket it for now. About time. I haven't talked to him here yet. Calico Jack, tell me what your first name was, please. That's exciting. Like, yeah. That's very exciting. Calico Jack Rackham, tell me what your real first name is. No, I need you to tell me now. <laughs> no, 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 no. We're leaving here shortly. Please? 
Calico Jack. Tell us your real first name. Come on, come on, Jack. Captain Calico Jack Rackham. Tell us your first name. The answer to that is John. By the way. Okay. Called him Calico Jack because of his clothing. He mm -hmm. used to wear the same royal colors from England, where he came from. So he wore a lot of blues and would steal clothing from people instead of their jewels and, and things like that. So yeah. he was known as Calico Jack. Mm -hmm. Come on, Calico Jack. Put your first name on the box that I'm holding. It's got a blue and green light on it. It says AM or AM, like as in morning. out of that thing? I, I honestly can't tell, to tell you okay. the truth. See, a lot of times, like, if I get something that's, you know, questionable, I'll throw it up on the TV and watch it that way. Uh-huh. Just because, obviously, it's a much bigger screen. Yeah. All right, let's go check out the front of this building and see if we can catch anything. Okay. And then, um, we'll kind of wrap this up and get you guys back to your vehicle. Okay. Sound good? Yep. Everybody tired of being wet? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'm good. Very cheap to go through, so if you guys do have a little bit of time, you might see some of the different okay. things. Like it's like five bucks to get in. Oh, that's nothing. Um, so like check your group on. I think my season pass was like nine dollars. Okay. And the only reason I have a season pass is because they have books in here I can't get elsewhere, and they give me a discount. Mm -hmm. So um, right next to this building, like I said, is the home of Nicholas Trot. It was the first brick building erected in Charleston in 1709. Okay. Uh, but this was finished in 1713, four years later. So, again, new facts that I'm learning now. So, he might actually be wanting to come over here. Okay. So, I'm going to move this down a little bit because that's the direction i got to send you guys anyway. Okay. And we'll kind of wrap up our conversation. Okay. All right. So, let's get that spirit box from you first. Somewhere. And if you want to hit that red square so it turns to a circle, that'll shut it off. Okay. 